turboprop. So you study propulsion in Thermo 1, then you go out to an actual airport and you look, and there's an airplane and it's got a propeller sticking out the front. And you say, what is that? And they say, well, that's a jet engine. It's not piston cylinder. Some of them are piston cylinder, but it's, it's, some of them are what they call turbo with a propeller in front, turboprop. So what's different? Well, they're trying to use the propeller, which was used for aircraft propulsion before jet engines existed, right? With reciprocating piston cylinders. That was all through uh, World War II until the very end. The very end, there was a very big change in aviation at the tail end of uh, World War II. When they first put out, it's not uncommon to think, hey, the propeller works so good, let's use the propeller. What does the propeller do? Why does the propeller give you propulsion in the engine? Beats the air into it beats the air into submission. What, is that what you said? <laughs> it chomps and throws the air back. That's what it does. And so it's kicking this back with a high speed. It's the same concept. You have to throw it back behind you with the high speed, and you've got to get a big capture area so you get a large M dot. You, the linear momentum concept still works, okay, for understanding why the, the propeller would be useful. So in some ways, increase M dot, maybe it doesn't have such a high speed as this speed, and it's still good for propulsion. It still gives you a great thrust for a small engine. A lot of times they'll have a gearbox and they can vary the, the gearing and the, such that it doesn't have to turn at the same, same rotation as the turbine, which typically goes very fast. But here now you have a little more work that has to not just supply the compressor, but has to supply the propeller. But that's not the mainstay in aviation. This is the mainstay in aviation, commercial aviation, not, not jet fighters. Uh, this, is, this is fuel efficient, slow, and get you there at a good speed, but not Mach 1 and accelerating in a vertical incline. You know, that's, that's what they can do in real engines and real aircraft. Have been able to do that in the 60s and 50s. But, okay, um, so what they have is a turbo fan so what does a fan do? Well, it's just like a propeller, but it's more encompassing. And so uh, this is what, if you actually board an aircraft, you look out there as you're waiting to get on it, and, and you see that, that's typically a turbofan on all your commercial aircraft. So they'll have big set of blades that are capturing a lot of air, lots of air, large cross-sectional area. And not all of it goes through the burner. Only some of it goes through the burner. Goes through all the compressor stages. The, it goes through the burner. Then it goes through the turbines to extract some work. And that work doesn't just uh, uh, be used to compress that air that eventually goes through the burners, but actually increases or captures, in just like a propeller, is a fan and blows back a lot of extra air. They call it bypass. So this is a high bypass turbofan engine having a large M dot outside that doesn't go through. Same concept, high speed, high M dot, you've got a lot of thrust. It works beautifully. Here's a low bypass. So what they're showing you is it just, there's a smaller fan area and it, it doesn't have as large of a mass flow rate through the fan. Okay, They'll have uh, stators and rotors, but not as many stages typically in the fan area. So you do have some pressure boost there to help really move it to get a large speed out. There's some really good stuff out there on how these things work. And you can see it and visualize it. Okay. <laughs>